it's a grilled steak, really good steak. Mm -hmm. Usually it's uh, medium rare cooked. But what has the steak on it is a fried egg. So it's a steak and it has a fried egg on top. The name of caballo, the name of horse comes because that fried egg looks like the saddle mm -hmm. okay. of the horse. You know, like it's like it's hanging by the sides. Mm -hmm. That's why the name. Okay. Usually, I mean, we have the that steak. We have the fried egg on top. We have potato with Creole sauce, which is usually onion and tomato sauce on the potato. We have also some salad with this dish. It's probably one of my favorites. Then second option is also really good. It's called Creole chicken. Creole chicken is a, uh, like a sandwich because we have. At the bottom, we have a uh, grilled chicken breast, a piece of chicken, yes, grilled, ch uh, grilled chicken breast. Then we have uh, plantain. Colombia, we're crazy for plantain. We'll be eating plantain many, many different times. I think the name of the program should be uh, <laughs> Colombia's Colombia Jewels and Plantain, not Coffee Triangle. Uh, so it's like a ripe, no, yes, like a fried plantain on top. And then we have probably a little bit of melted cheese, like a sandwich, right? It also comes with uh, steamed potatoes and with salad. That mm -hmm. is option number two. And as an option number three, we have kind of Caesar um, salad. So it's a lot of a lot of lettuce. It comes with uh, red beans. It also comes with a lot of avocado. Mm -hmm. uh, probably comes with a little bit of rice on the side and many more vegetables. Okay. Uh, three options. I think that this time I'll go for the third option. As I said, I'm, I need to balance a little bit my diet, okay? Mm. Like uh, 300 grams, 300 grams, like a half, half of a pound, this, this big, this big. This big, this big is the, the, the steak. So please, uh, raise your hand for the bistec a caballo. Okay. Of course. This is the sky I was talking about. Like, we're not going on. Uh, tengo. Two. Eso. Y dos ensaladas. Son muy Esto muy bien. Es muy chiquitico. Ah, de una candelaria. In that part of Candelaria, we don't get to see, uh, for example, a lot of, of the colonial style. We're going to see a mixture of different types of architecture. Colombia had its independence July the 20th, 1810. So 205 years ago. Is that right? 205 years ago, yeah. Um, that was our first independence. Our independence back in that time was led by a guy called Antonio Nariño. He was one of the first important politicians we had in the revolution. More than a politician, he was um, he was um, can I say this? Uh, an erudite. He was a person that knew a lot. I mean, about many different disciplines. He translated the citizen rights from French to Spanish. So our independence, our revolution was based on the French Revolution, right? He was the very first person to talk about uh, abolishing slavery in Colombia, about equal rights. He was one of the very first to do that. Let's say he got that independence, not only him, but many more people. Then we were free for five years and when we, we were reconquered again by the Spaniards in 1815. They, I mean, uh, we were reconquered and there were many things that were going on in Europe. Uh, Napoleon was invading Spain at the beginning of the century. So that's why they needed to get back their troops into Europe. And then when they could get, let's say, their freedom back, they came here. Uh, in 1819, Mr. Simon Bolivar appeared in the picture of our independence because he was the one who led the final independence in Colombia 1819, August the 7th. 
And when he gave Colombia the independence, he gave the independence to Venezuela, Panama, Colombia, Ecuador, Bolivia, and the northern part of Peru. He had a big project in his head that was called the Great Colombia that he started to develop in 1821-22. This, this, this big project included Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and Panama. It was called the Great Colombia. He wanted to create a big, big nation. Okay. Uh, by the end of 1820s, 1828, this project started to fall apart. One of the reasons because Bolivar wanted to have too much power in his hands, and probably this power was corrupting him too. Um, for the ones who were in Bolivia, you know that Bolivar, I mean Bolivia is after him. And, um, and uh, this project started to fall apart by 1828 until 1830. This church that you will see here to your right is the Carmen, uh, I don't know, Carmen, yeah, Iglesia del Carmen or Carmen Church. As I said to some of you yesterday, uh, that is a Gothic and neoclassical church of the 1920s and it belongs to a Catholic school. Is this El Juan Don Bosco? Don Bosco. Don Bosco School. That's right, Don Bosco School. Um, so, this project of the Great Colombia didn't last too much, right? Bolivar died in 1830, and that was the end of that big project. Then, it's important to understand that after his death, is the beginning of the political parties in Colombia. It's the beginning of the political parties in Colombia. People who follow Bolívar's idea created something that is called the Conservador Political Party. And people who follow uh, Santander's ideas created or de uh, yes, developed the liberal, uh, liberal Political Party. Who was Santander? Santander was another general of the nation. He was with Bolívar, but they both had different ideas of the country. Bolívar was more, more a centralist person, Santander was more a federalist person. So they had argues, they had differences, that's why this project never worked out. Um, folks, now we're, go we're about to walk into the Candelaria area. You see, you know that it's raining, so bring your rain gear or your umbrella. From here, we'll be walking to the restaurant. We'll be walking for around 45, probably 50 minutes. What is he selling? This is what I'm drinking. You say, okay, it's regular coffee. But let me tell you something. What I'm drinking right now, of course it's coffee, but it's something that I call tin, something that I call tinto. tinto. Like the vino tinto. Oh. But in Colombia, we, don't, coffee, eh? we can call the wine tinto, but we call the black coffee, the black coffee, we call that tinto. So you go into a local place and you want to be a little bit more local, and instead of saying coffee, you say tinto. <laughs> and they will serve you black coffee. This gentleman here, he sells coffee. But what happens? This coffee is not probably the best coffee you expect to drink in Colombia. Because this is what we call sec you know, like second grade coffee. Uh -huh. So it's not the best coffee because it's not the one that is... This coffee is never going to be exported because it's not good enough to be exported. It's sometimes very rancid, sometimes very bitter. But what? Well, let me tell you. But this is more, I mean, this is the type of coffee that more than 80% of the Colombians drink. Because probably, I don't know, we don't have the money to buy the best quality coffee, we don't have the tradition to buy it, but we drink this. And we add a very local sugar that is called panela, which kind of molasses. And we, for example, I pay for this 
no, 500 pesos, which is 20 cents. Okay, and this is very, very popular. So the guys are drinking tinto, I'm drinking tinto, and many people will be here drinking this. So this is William, you know, William. he sells it. Probably he doesn't have, you know, like a job at all. But he has his own, you know, how do you call this? Thermos. Thermos. And he goes from place to place selling coffee. That's right, selling, selling coffee. He doesn't have to pay any, you know, any rent. He doesn't to pay, he doesn't have to declare anything. Is sugar in it then? There is, a, yes, there is sugar. But okay. it's... A buy one. You buy one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it's very sweet. In Colombia, folks, we like very sweet or very salty. We don't like spicy food. So you'll find that in many different places, it will be very sweet. Okay. Uh, yes. No, no. So the next time you want to go into a very, very local place, Does not Juan Valdez, you ask for Tinto, right? Want to try? This cannot get any more local than this. <laughs> yeah, there's no any more local than this. Right? Uh, Ernesto, when he was passing by, he used another word. He no, was saying tinto. something. He no, he didn't. Tinto. He didn't say tinto? tinto. He says tinto. I thought he was saying something else. That's what. This man is called or is known as Silva. Is in history the most important poet in our history. He's, he was a poet. He was a poet of uh, late 19th century, and he died very, very young. He wrote a very famous a poem that was called, in Spanish it's called El Nocturno, in English might be translated as Midnight Dreams, or the Nocturne, yes. And it's about a lady, a lady that he fell in love. Mm -hmm. And in the back side of the, of the bill, we have the lady that is standing in the forest, her name is Elvira. Elvira mm -hmm. lived in reality. She was known for being probably the most beautiful woman of Bogota of 1880s, probably. Mm. Think is that Elvira died at a very young age. She was 19 and she died. Mm. Think is that Silva was in love with her. And after three or four years after, he couldn't put up with losing her. So he decided to kill himself, to Aww. commit suicide. So what he did is that he shot himself in his heart. That's why there is a heart, like kind of broken heart. What was the problem? That this lady was his sister. Oh, that's, that's a problem. That's a problem. That's a problem. Yeah. yeah, that is kind of. <laughs> I, got a, I got a heart. Oh. Right, the heart you see right now. So this is the heart. This is a broken heart. Oh, yeah. oh, this is oh, a broken oh. heart. Oh, that is so this sweet. is Silva's broken heart. Oh. Okay. So now we have a little bit of the 5,000 bill. Okay? Mm -hmm. We have to try that. He was 31 years old. And she was, she was 19 and he was 31. She died. He was about 25. She died in 18... 1886 and he committed suicide in 1891. Uh, I think it was tuberculosis. I think it was an atrocious cause. She was sick.
Ernesto is gonna join the army. You look good with the, with the fatigues, like you belong. <laughs> For example, these are the president guards. They are also doing military service. Folks, I think that we can you, we cannot walk or we cannot step on that side of the of the sidewalk because we are, let's say, very close to the president's house. So you better come on this side. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> we were thrown out. <laughs> My cell phone, and I promise that I will send it via email. Ah. Uh -huh. Yeah, because we were too close. Yeah, I just kind of questioned that. You've never been in the service. Ah. <laughs> How do they know when to come and go? They were told to go. Oh, <laughs> he's late. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is the vice president. So okay. this is where all the media usually comes in. Probably, I don't know, politicians. For men, it is, but there are three cases where you don't have to go. When you turn 18 years old, and you, for example, you have a child, and you're, of course, you're already a father and you take care of them, you prove that you don't have to go. If you're 18 years old and you are only child, you don't go. And if you're already 18 years old and you are already in college and you prove that you don't have to go. So you didn't so go? I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> because by the time I was only child I had my sister when I was 19 oh, wow. and, uh, and I was already in college. Okay. So I didn't have, I mean, when I finished high school I went to one of the battalions to, you know, because I had to go and I proved that but at the end I have to pay. I have to pay to get my, yes. my waiver card or my license. Oh, yeah. That's right. So they are doing it for one year. Yeah. If it is the army, I mean, if it is in the army, because they are pressing guards. If it is the army, army, they go for one year and a half. Mm -hmm. okay. If it is with the police department, because you can do also, you can do it also with the police department. You do it for one year. Yeah. So how, how come I see women? Women, they do it because they want to do a military career ah. or in the police department that's okay. because it's their choice and they gotta go through different tests physical tests psychological tests blah 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 <laughs> and then little by little they go they're going up okay mm -hmm. any other question ah they maybe that's the important person that, coming that they, they uh, if you see the two guards over there yeah yeah somebody put it yeah. OIT, I didn't tell you, but we have... We are here already. <laughs> wearing a uniform, they were in the uniform of 1903. When we had a civil war in Colombia that was called the 1000 Days War. And the backpack they have is the kind of campaign backpack. So let's say that, I mean, in this moment it's hollow, there is nothing in there, but they probably should have a sleeping bags, Probably food, probably grenades, mm. because they were going in campaigns. So it's like a kind of tribute to that time, right? Mm -hmm. Minister of Interior, and we'll be walking to one more block. Any other question, folks? Villamizar um. is his last name. And he's doing it for one year. Villamizar, ¿estás planeando seguir la carrera o solamente se acaba ahí? Okay. He wants to continue, probably he wants to do a, a military career. ¿Cuánto llevas del...? He's been in the military service for six months. And I have one more question, if it's possible. Uh, do you have any salary? ¿Tienes un salario? No. ¿Qué hace uno con eso? ¿Para qué? ¿Para los buses? Pero te quedas acá en el, en, en el batallón. Ah, aquí en el batallón. Here, right on the corner, there is a battalion. ¿Batalion? Mm -hmm. yes. yeah. ¿De infantería? Es infantry battalion, which is right here on the corner. He has to stay there 
And I was asking him if he can they get some money. Is that around fifty dollars per month? How much? Which is pretty much for they say mecato, which is a Colombian word for snacks. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so they provide snacks. all the meals and the they provide bed. the meals, uniform, comida, uniforme, todo lo provee. Why are you laughing? No, me tienes que dar que dar risa. Que te da risa. You see, he's 18. He's 18. When we're talking, 18 years. 18. He's 18 years. Probably, he's thinking. He's thinking about that. How often do they get to go home? How often do they get to go home? Every month. Every month. For how long? Twice, two days a week. Two, day, two, two, two days, days per a month. month. Uh, mm -hmm. Now I'll take the picture. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Isn't that sweet? Uh, folks, before we go, uh, I know it is rainy, but I want you to see this building. We have a, one of the oldest buildings in town that is still standing up. And it's this museum, Santa Clara Museum. It used to be a cloister, a convent for nuns. So indoors is very, very interesting because it's like an old church, all very Baroquian church, old I mean, all glitted. It's very interesting. We are one block away from the main plaza, not really far away from the hotel, two blocks. No, right? <laughs> wow. The collection must be doing like a recycling project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In this convent, the Spanish families came, and Spanish families came, they had their children, they had their daughters, right? Oops, and, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, let me just give you a little background of this place. Let's suppose that Karen, Teresa, and here Juana, Jim, are my daughters, right? You are my daughters. Right? right? Yes, Daddy. So I'm a Spanish. I come here with my children. And my children, or my ladies, my, yeah, my daughters, uh, their lives are already decided. So for example, you are, you are, let's say, you are the oldest one of my daughters. So your life is already decided. You are going to be married with another Spanish man. Right? You have to go and, and, and get married with another Spanish man. Right? And say, Karen, you are my youngest daughter. So you don't have choice. You have to take care of your father and your mom. The rest of your life. But I'm talking about 17th century, 18th century, right? And then, then we have Teresa, who is in the middle. And Teresa doesn't have any other choice right, than being here in this place. So you're going to be sent here into this type of convents, cloisters, and you are never, ever going, you are never going out. You have to live your entire life here. That's why in places like this, there are two gates. There is one here and one right next to the other side. Because every time there was a ceremony, every time there was a religious parade, you couldn't go out, but part of the parade could come in by one of the gates and they could, I mean, they could go out by the other. Sometimes you were not, I mean, nobody could see you. That's why there is a, here there is a, a choir and there is an altar, no, a choir, better. And you can actually participate from the, from the, I mean, you can participate of the, of the, of the celebration, but from the distance. So you can actually see what's going on, but people cannot see what you're doing or how you look like, right? 
So this, com this used to be a convent, then it was a church, and nowadays, after 1960s, is a museum. What I find interesting about the museum is that it's a very old construction in which nowadays they mix with contemporary art. And I was just talking to one of the, I don't know, person, one of the people in charge, and they say that this exposition here that we have is, for, of, uh, of, is from a fashion designer and also a plastic artist. So they try to combine a little bit of the colonial dresses of the time. So here we have a kind of contrast of this contemporary exposition and this very old church. It's called the Santa Clara Convent or St. Clair Convent. For the ones who visited the other church, and it was you, Jane, they belong to, to, they belong to the same Catholic order who are the um, San Franciscans. So Santa Clara used to be, thank you very much. <laughs> Santa Clara was San Francisco de Assis, sister, sister. Yeah. Right. right? So folks, you want to go and take pictures, please enjoy here a little bit of this, a little bit of the other. End of the lowest part. Just keep on going. I, I wonder why they would have these. I don't know. Oh my gosh. But especially this one, this is like a Playboy man. <laughs> wow. Well. Behind you. Down. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Are you okay? okay, what is the story behind the racing I don't nun? Know. I have no idea about it. Playboy <laughs> nun? <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> we have to find out. This is, tell me again, what do you oh, do here? It's a confessional. It's where you go, you kneel. You kneel. You tell the priest your sin. Ah. And that's it. And then he tells you to do how many Hail Marys or something? Yes. Interesting things with that story. Beautiful. So Ernesto, the nuns were almost like prisoners here. They didn't have the choice to leave. If they wanted to leave, they would expay. And, and they had, you know, their parents, you know, approval not mm. to not to leave. Did any of them escape ever? I don't know. I mean, there were 400 probably, years ago, right? So I don't think so. I don't think that they were interested in, in escaping. I mean, they didn't want to, you know, to mix up with. You know, with this indigenous wife, there is no reason. Kiss 
just I mean, it's a local representation of one of the local you know jobs that we have in the city. But he's here now, but probably this is the Department of Tourism. Area, we will see more of this sculpture. Housing front. They went to. It was just for the locals, and that was that house was just for the Spaniards. No, I can't. It's just a local. Just a fun thing. Yes, it's nothing. Good afternoon, uh, folks. Uh, I think this is Colombia. Is that Colombia? Yeah, it looks like Colombia. Oh, shape. Wow. Santander says the weapons have given us freedom, but now the laws will give us freedom. The weapons have given us, or guns have given us, no, weapons have given us independence. independence. Now the laws will give us freedom. Okay. Yeah. That is nice. Yes. This so is the judicial funny. palace. Judicial. Is, of course, have, I could have asked you to translate. I'm sorry, Pamela. I don't know what you're saying. The engraved. Laws. Laws will give us uh, liberty. Yes. 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 This is nice, but the other one was cozier. <laughs> Carmen asked him his name and he gives us lemon because he was giving us a <laughs> That would have been a good one. <laughs> Do it again. <laughs> Hola, lemon. <laughs> his name is actually Carlos. <laughs> This afternoon will come the adventure. So I love this thing. I thought it was a sandwich, West, though. Costa Ricans speak very, very similar. Oh, beautiful. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, it does. This is the Biftec de Caballo. No, no, but a little bit. This is a Creole sauce. We thought that something else is coming with it, but that's it. Yeah. Let's go back to the hotel. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. 
telling is that this is the second most used library in the world because there are so many young people here and they use the library a lot. Uh, we have done like a five minutes of air conditioning, fresh a little bit the bus, but then we will turn it off. Um, folks, I know we just ate. I know that we just <laughs> had lunch. I know that, but I need to make the order for dinner. <laughs> Yes. Hey. 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 So filet uh, comes with a steamed potato and a little bit of salad. Yes, yes, yes. Highly recommended. It comes from the Pacific Ocean, so it's been properly frozen. That is option number one. And also comes with a garlic sauce. And number two is um, what we call. Uh, Lomo with another type of a steak, like the one we had today for lunch. A little bit, um, I mean, it's not that thick, it's a little bit like a thinner, right? And it will come with um, pepper sauce also on the side. Um, as a third option, there is a salad that is called Greek salad. <laughs> Greek salad and two cream. Three different options. So I will uh, the steak, the salad, one salad. All of these young men and women, they all pretty much study in the university or in the college in front of us. That uh, red brick building that we'll see is called the uh, Universidad uh, Externado de Colombia. Probably one of the most prestigious universities we have here in the city. It's a private university. I know education is a very interesting topic that we have to cover, because I know we have teachers, but not in this moment. <laughs> because, let's say, uh, I want to take my time to explain it, uh, and this is not the time. Um, but as I said, you will see a lot of young men and women, especially in this area, because just in the historical area, we have 16 universities. So this is one of those 16 universities, and that's why also we have Danny as our driver. Uh, many people say that he's the second best driver in town. The best, or the, I mean, the first driver is his wife. <laughs> so she drives his life. Let's see if that's true or not. Um, no, that means that he's a confident man. Serrate Hill. Day is getting better. And I probably will have a clearer view of the city than this morning. Because this morning was actually cloudy and overcast. So it was kind of impossible even to see the mountain. Now, mm -hmm. I think that we can see a little bit about it. Uh, so bring your rain gear one more time. We'll be a little bit 
more chilly up there so you will feel the change when we get up there um, we're going to, when we get up there we're going to set a meeting point meeting hour in case you don't want to walk all the way up we will get to the station